Hello, Root community. If you don't know who I am, my name is S, and I'm the one from the Discord community who is building this tabletop simulator mod. Along with Slug's help, we have been able to make something that we're really proud of. What I want to share with you today is the Add Set Draft tool that has been updated into the advanced setup. If you look at the board by clicking Shift-9, you can see our button here called Advanced Setup. All you have to do is click this to get started. I'm here with Xing Xing today, and she will help me show you this tool. Here we go. When you select this tool, you need to have all your players join through the roster. When all your players are joined, you simply hit OK. Next up is your map selection. You can choose one of the four standard maps or any of the fan-made maps. If you wish to choose these at random, you can hit random and it will choose one of the standard ones for you. We got the lake map. And when your map is selected, it displays it on the table, set up properly with the clearing markers, the ruins, and the landmark pieces, as well as the market, the stock market for crafting. Selecting a deck is the same thing. You can choose one of the standard decks, one of the fan-made decks, or click random to choose one of the standard decks for you on its own. Again, once the deck has been selected, it shows it over here. In a two-player game, you don't play with the dominance cards, so the dominance card track is not provided. This is for your own convenience. Back on the board, step number three is to set up the bots. The bots are displayed here, and all you have to do is click the one you want to use. If you want to let fate decide, you can hit random. If you decide not to use the bots, you can simply hit skip. The most amount of bots that we can select right now is four because the total number of players is six, two human players and four bot players. For the purpose of this demo, I want to showcase these two bots for you. Simply choose them and hit setup. As you can see, it randomly places these around the map. Player 1, Player 2, Player 3, and Player 4. If you're playing with the bots, the priority markers also spawn on the board. The next task is to set up the bots. If you need help with this, you can look at the board and it gives you instructions involving a setup card, setting a difficulty, and selecting traits. If you need help with randomization for clearing priorities and clearing placement, you can use the randomization cards. The first to set up is the Electric Eerie because they have the letter B in their corner. The Automated Alliance has C, so we have to do the Electric Eerie first. If you look at their card, the card has four steps. Next to step number two is an icon on the left that looks like a nut. This icon symbolizes that this is the step that human players are required to do. Steps one through uh, one, three, and four are done for you. Let's take a look at step number two. Place roost and starting warriors. Place one roost and six warriors in the corner clearing diagonally opposite from the clearing with the keep token. If the marquees is not playing, place these pieces in a random corner clearing. The marquees are not playing, so we get to place these wherever they want to go. They set up randomly, so that so now we have a use for our tool here. Check this out. All you have to do is right click, hit spread, and it will randomly place these in an order. The first one here says Northwest, so we're going to take our faction starting kit, starting group, and put it into the Northwest faction. Sorry, in the Northwest clearing, which is over here. We also take their roost and let them have that as well. The Electric Eerie are now all set up. Just as, just as simple as that. 
The Automated Alliance also have their setup card, but if you look next to their steps, there is no nut icon because all three steps are done for you automatically. The Automated Alliance have no setup. They're done. We're done with our setup for our bots, so we simply hit continue. Next up, we can choose to have landmarks. Again, if you don't wish to have any landmarks added to your map, you can hit skip. Otherwise, you can choose up to two of your own choice. If you want to let fate decide, you can do that too. This map already comes with one of the landmarks, the ferry. If you choose the ferry over here, when, this, when the landmarks spawn, this ferry will disappear. Otherwise, if you use other landmarks, the ferry will remain. If you wish to get rid of it, you can if you want. This is a choice that can be made by your group. We're going to use these two for our setup and watch they're going to spawn right here. Here we go. The Electric Eerie are going to choose one at random to choose, either the Legendary Forge or the Tower. And the way I like to do that is to roll the dice. You can do whatever you wish, but I like to do it this way. And the farthest or the closest die to this corner is the one I'm going to use. The Legendary Forge is going to be 0 and 1. The Tower is going to be 2 and 3. Here's what I do. Do whatever you wish. This is 2, so the Tower is going to be set up by the Electric Eerie. The Tower setup says, place the Tower landmark in a clearing that has a ruin. It cannot have a landmark. They can put them in any, any clearing that has a ruin. What we can do now is use the random clearing cards to flip and spread them out. And we can see that we're looking for any of the ruin clearings. We got it 10, 11, and 12, and 5. If we go through the cards in order, we see that 5 is the first one. I think 10 is buried in here. There it is. 5 is the first one, so that is where our tower will go. I can choose where to put the Legendary Forge next, because I'm the next player. And according to this rule here, this is the order of which we get to put them on the board, on the map. I will take the Legendary Forge and place it in a clearing. It cannot have a landmark or be adjacent to one. I'm going to put it over here in this corner. Because that's a fox clearing, I then get to take all the fox items, the two swords, the crossbow, and the hammer, and put them on the fox, or put them on the legendary forge. They live here now. You might be saying, hey, don't you have to flip these over? And the answer is yes, you technically do. But if I hit continue, they flip themselves. One, two, three. The next step is my favorite question of the whole setup process. Oops. Do you want to use the hirelings? Because I want to show you everything that there is to offer with this, I'm going to say sure. And these bad boys get to, to spawn right here. The next step is to set up the hirelings. If you look at these two, they do not set up because they are demoted. Because of the number of players, it randomly will roll for these as well as flip over to demoted ones. These are set up for you. Your hireling die is here and the control markers are there. You also have the end of turn markers, the hireling markers placed right here. This is all done for you automatically if you say that you want to play with the hirelings. According to the rules here, starting with the last player in turn order and going counterclockwise, players set up one dealt hireling each as described on its hireling card. Some have no setup instructions. Out of all of these, <clears throat> the Furious Protector is the only one to have setup rules. Setup says place the Protector pawn in any clearing. Again, we're going to look at the Electric Eerie to set them up. So they can choose from here, or they can go the other way, or you can simply reshuffle these and do them again. Any way you guys agree that is fair to make it random. Seven is the first clearing here, so I'm going to put this into the seventh clearing. And I'm done setting up the hirelings. When you hit done, you're going to move on to the draft. 
We don't need the random tools anymore, so they will disappear. And it looks like this. Step seven says draw five cards. As you can see, Xing Xing and I now have five cards in our hand. And I can see mine, and she can see hers. The draft has been done for you with the, uh, the faction draft. If you don't wish to play with the faction draft, you can choose not to. All you have to do is select this button up here, and you're given all the other options that are available for play. The button here would be the Eerie, but we can't play as them because the Electric Eerie have already been selected. This one would be the Automated Alliance, or the Woodland Alliance, but the Automated Alliance have already been selected, so that has been disabled. Finally, the Badgers would be here, the Keepers in Iron, but because we have the bo Badger Bodyguards, that has been disabled. All the options that are still available are free to choose from. Again, if you want to go back to your ad set draft, you can and just click on this button. Very simple. I'm going to choose the lizards because I'm a big lizard fan. And I'm going to go do my setup. My setup card is here with the ad set draft card. Choose a homeland clearing that is not adjacent to homelands. I'm going to start, technically I could start down here. I'm going to start there. Put four warriors in a matching garden in your homeland. So I'm going to start with the forge. Is this cheating? Seems like a good advantage, huh? Put two warriors in your acolyte box. Oh, put three warriors in clearings as adjacent uh, clearings adjacent to it as evenly as possible. We can do that. So one is going to go here, one's going to go here, and one's going to go over here. I need to put my other gardens back. I know, I know. Put two warriors in your acolytes box. Fill your garden tracks with gardens, that's done. And put your outcast marker on the outcast side on any space. I'm going to put it in fox so I can craft foxes. My setup is now done. I can now come back to the board and say I am finished and I click next. Sing Sing can now choose her faction, and wouldn't you know it, she's a big fan of Scoundrel. The reason we do not have to use a red faction, and the first option is not a red faction in this draft, is because a red faction has already been chosen. Sing Sing is going to choose Scoundrel, and she will set up her Scoundrel like this. She's going to start in this clearing over here. She's going to put relationship markers for the Woodland Alliance, for the Eerie, or for the Automated Alliance, for the Eerie, and for my lizards. Again, I'm doing this from memory. Give me one second. Oh, I, the, the quest as well. <laughs> Bear with me. And I think, I think that is how you set up a Vagabond with this. Pawn in any forest, shuffle quest deck, our items underneath, that's fine. S items in your satchel, relationship markers, completely done. She's now finished, so she will come over back to the board and hit the next button. And then she's the most first player. We don't have a first player, that's the bot, but she's able to hit start game. And when she does, the game will start like this. The turns are enabled, and we are ready to play. This is how easy it is to set up a game. If you want to see this even faster, Check this out. Before we move on, I did remember two things I forgot. Number one, you're supposed to draft your hands before you hit start, which I did not do. Remember to draft your hands. Number two, I saved this to the very end and I completely forgot. Put your Vagabond, put your Woodland Alliance, put all your VP markers at start, at the zero marker. Please don't forget this. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for my blunder. To show you guys one more thing on how fast you can start this up, even if you don't want all the bells and whistles of the bots and the landmarks and the hirelings, you can still get through this draft and use it to set up a game quickly. Here we go. Hit advanced setup. Again, it will clear the board. Have your players join like this.
hit OK, choose a map, choose a deck, skip the bots, skip the landmarks, skip the hirelings, and you're ready to draft. If you don't like the choices here, simply go up here and you have everything available for you. Again, Sing Sing is a big fan of that scoundrel. So she's going to choose that one, and I'm going to choose cats after she does her setup. Many of you are saying, hey, this, this game is not acceptable because of reach. You're right. However, that's through the simple draft. Through ad set draft, you can do whatever you want. So I wish you guys happy playing. I hope you enjoy this tool. I hope you enjoy this whole thing I've been working on very hard with Slug. And happy gaming. Cheers.